As you can probably imagine, we've been pretty busy with all these little projects around the new RV. Yeah, getting ready to get on the road, obviously we've got a ton to do. Some of these projects are small and easy and some are a bit more involved. Let's jump right into the first one, which is our shower head. Our new RV came with a super fancy, cool looking, <laughs> huge shower head Very residential, thing. yeah. I kind of had my hesitations about it though from the get-go. A lot of my issues and concerns were more about cleaning because it's black. <laughs> but that really hasn't been the problem. Yeah, and I was wondering how that was going to work. You know, RVs, you're kind of prone to want to save water, not just have yeah. like you would in a residential. Especially boondocking. Yeah. So we did a little test on this and we weren't real impressed with that stock shower heads flow. I mean, the flow was probably okay. The pressure was like Wah. In our last RV, we absolutely loved our Oxygenics shower head. Yeah, it, but it just wouldn't quite work right in this because A, it's brushed nickel versus <laughs> black, whatever that is. It look a little odd. Yeah, plus it just wouldn't really fit right in there. But we did find a good replacement on Amazon. It's supposed to be 1.8 gallons per minute, which is a nice reductive flow, but good pressure. You know he's got to do tests. We love our tests. Immediately after installing it, first of all, installing a shower head is super, super easy. You screw the old one off, you screw the new one on. I don't recall if our shower head came with the uh, tape, but it's really easy to pick up some thread tape at Lowe's or whatever. It's real cheap. We could tell immediately that the pressure was a lot better. So that's a nice stream. But to test the actual how much water you would use, all that I did is I used our outdoor meter that we always use for like flushing the tank and things like that. And I shut all the water off set a timer for two minutes, turned on the shower, and the results were pretty astonishing. The stock shower head, we used 4.3 gallons in that two minutes. And it was just a, just a little, you know, wimpy little limp shower spray. Yeah. Now with the new one, over two minutes, we only used 2.6 gallons. So that's a 40% savings in water over that two minutes. Significant. And the pressure was so much better. As always, we will have links for all these products in the description below. And they may be links to Amazon or maybe links somewhere else this time. When I went to actually write the blog post for this, I noticed that our shower head that we love so much is gone off Amazon. Mm -hmm. But I emailed them and they're going to have them back, so hopefully we'll have a link by the time you see this video. Either way, we'll have a link somewhere for this shower head. Next up on our list is a TPMS, mm -hmm. which is for us a day one safety item. Absolutely. We do not roll without a TPMS. And a TPMS, if you don't know, is a tire pressure monitoring system. And it monitors not only pressure, but also temperature. And that is key because a lot of your blowouts aren't from like overpressure, which a lot of people think. They're from low pressure and then the tire gets hot, degrades the rubber and then boom. That happened once to us. It was a road. <laughs> it was the road for sure. But the cool thing is if it happens in the right sequence, you can a lot of times get a pre-warning before your blowout. And that's where it really comes into play. We've been using our TST 507 since, gosh, way back in 2018 when we did our first tire safety video. Yeah, it's been very important to us all along, and that thing was great, but it wasn't super easy to program. I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't intuitive at all. You had to like push this button, then push this button, and then use this button to go up, and this button to go down, and it was really kind of a pain. That has all changed oh, with this TST 507. It's so easy to program. Check this out. We are factory defaults here, and I'm going to show you how easy this thing is to program all 12 of these tires. We're going to do like a little semi-speed test. We're not going to rush it. We're just going to go through it. I'm on power unit. Mm -hmm. I am on the right rear. This is the inside. This is the outside. So I'm going to do uh, right rear inside. Learn. Save. Outside, learn, save. You're being timed. Hurry up. <laughs> Passenger side, front, learn, save. Run. <clears throat> run, run. Driver side, front, learn, save. Gosh, this is a lot faster than it used to be. Oh my gosh, it's so much better. <laughs> And let's see, this is my inside tire, so driver side, inside, learn, save, outside, learn, 
Save. Now I know from experience when I exit here, it's warning me on these tires. So all I can see in this reflection is the sky. There you go. So pressure alert setting on the front. I'm at 90. Drive axle, I'm at 80. And now, now it won't complain anymore. Now let's go to the RV. All right, code learning now. Trailer one, you can do up to five. We're on the passenger side front. Learn. Save. Next one, learn. Next one, learn. Now I'm just going to go into my pressure setting, set it to 120 PSI, save, done. Nice. All 12 tires are now programmed in with the appropriate high and low and temperature programs all done, done. And it's been four minutes and 24 seconds since I hit record when you were explaining. So it's oh, yeah. less than four minutes to do all that. Nice. Good job. Yeah. You may have noticed a few things during that programming scene, and one of them is we do have pass-through sensors on all 12 tires. Yeah, we, we changed over to those. We used to have cap sensors on the truck, but now that we have those Phoenix valve extenders, which we showed in our 450 video, I'll link that down below. They're nice steel valve stems. They're also nice and short. I used flow-throughs on all 12 tires now, which makes it super easy if you have to add or remove air. You don't have to pull that off and hear the thing beep like crazy. And while we absolutely love both of our TST TPMS systems, I wasn't super crazy about the suction cup mounts on the glass. Now the mounting system for the 507 and for the 770, both come with this suction cup attached to this arm or this arm for the 770, uh, but they both have the same suction cup. And it's okay, but after a while, like a lot of these, it loses some of its efficacy and it just sort of dies and it doesn't just doesn't hold well after a while. But our GoPro mounts have never had a problem. They hold great. And you can kind of see the size of the suction cup makes a big difference. I mean, look at the difference in size there. What I did on our 507, I'm going to duplicate here. And that's basically moving the arm piece of it. You know, the new one has this cool magnetic mount moving the arm piece of it off of the stock suction cup to the gopro suction cup it fits in there nicely this way however you can see the screws that go through are also quite a bit different in size so i took a 3 16 inch drill bit and drilled out the center of this and now it goes through it's snug but it does go through. Right now that unit just sits on that magnet mount on our dash, just powered by battery, but I will be wiring that into our Ford Upfitter switches in the future so we can just leave it in there and on all the time. Now that the three of us are back on the road, this next mod is all for keeping Daisy safe and comfortable. Yeah, and that's our Waggle, and that's kind of a strange name I know, but it's a little device that sits in our RV and it's plugged in and it monitors power, temperature, and humidity, and we can set thresholds, and if any of those get out of range, like it gets too hot in here or power goes out, it sends us both email and text alerts. And to both of us, so if one mm -hmm. of us isn't paying attention to our phone and the other has the phone on them, then we will be notified. And it's great when we are away from the RV, but Daisy's back here by herself. We know that she is going to be safe. Yeah. And if you watched our pet safety video from a couple of years ago, you might know we used the Marcel. It's a very similar device and there was nothing wrong with that at all. It's just that that was on the 3G network and the 3G network was going away and we had to upgrade. And we decided just to try the waggle. Now I will say that I like the size of this much better yeah. <laughs> than yeah. you know the marcel i think the newer one is, is still much bigger but it's like much taller and both of those are good but the important thing is that we are aware of daisy's environment at all times additionally both this and the marcel connect over the cellular network directly which is really cool so you don't have to have internet to make this work 
The catch is you have to be in range of cell for this to work. So while this is the core of our pet monitoring system, we are going to be putting our Govi back in, which connects over Wi-Fi, which of course, if you saw our internet video, that can use Starlink or AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, it can use any of them. So we like to have multiple ways. Yeah. This next mod is also for Daisy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is not a fan of any stairs without carpet or treads or something that her little paws can grip onto. And we already showed you that we put the little stair treads on the outside steps, mm -hmm. which are great for us too, right? But inside we needed to put something on the two steps that go up into the bedroom and the bathroom so Daisy can get up and down by herself. Just like in our last RV, I covered those stairs with just some random pieces of rug I found at Lowe's. Mm -hmm. You know, you want it obviously to match your RV. You want it to be thin enough that you can bend it and wrap it around things. And you want it to be durable. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to vacuum it or spot clean it if you need to. Mm -hmm. And again, these rugs were pretty cheap and they were almost identical to the color of the steps themselves. Mm -hmm. We were both super surprised at how long that carpet lasted in our 397. Yeah, I mean, like a $12 daily, rug. Daily use, 365 days yeah. a year for like five and a half years, and it was great. So we hope this lasts just as long. Now, the advantage I had in our old RV was that three sides of those steps were covered, so I had some room for mistakes mm -hmm. there. Yeah. These, not so much. They're out in the open, so I kind of had to get it right. Now, I wish I had some kind of magic step one, step two, step three, here's how you do this, but I don't. It's just kind of a cut and clip and tip and roll. And the way I did it was I started out by taking the long edge and folding it over and using Gorilla construction glue. And I think the instruction said, leave it for 24 hours. So I did. And that gave us the long back edge, which of course is the easy part. Yeah. From there on the corners, it was just a matter of folding and cutting and then refolding and cutting and then eventually screwing it in. Then the screwing it in was your idea. Mm -hmm. Because the other big difference about these steps versus our old ones is these have a metal plate on the bottom for support. So I was going around in my head about how to staple into that. And she was like, well, why don't you use screws? <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, duh. And that actually made it easy because the edge of the step where the metal comes up, I could put it right in the corner. And it's really just a matter of working your way around it and just doing the best job and not worrying about what it looks like on the bottom because unless people lay on your floor and look under there, they're not going to see it. Yeah. And honestly, having carpet on the steps is beneficial for us too. So it's, it's safety for us too. Primarily, it's for a little Daisy. And you can see it's Daisy approved. What do we got next? The other ones are big ones and they're in the office. So let's go in there. Oh, this is exciting. All right, first up are our desks. Yeah, the desks we just kept from our 397, and they are basically Formica countertops with a rounded front edge because it's easier on our hands typing and no backsplash. Yeah, you know, like that little, like, I don't know, five or six inch backsplash that mm -hmm. usually goes behind it. Yeah, you don't want that because you want to be able to mount stuff on the back and have cables go over and whatever. So. Yeah. Super easy, find a local cabinet shop that makes these and measure and get them made. Now, because we moved these over from our 397 and the layout here is obviously a little bit different. Our bathroom is totally different and this distance to this cubby is totally different. So it did take a little bit of modifications, but really all I had to do was cut three inches off of the unfinished edge. Don't know if we told you that, but one edge is unfinished and the other edge is finished. Mounting the desks was super simple. It's just eight screws on those arms and they screw right in. Of course, then I added all of our monitors and UPSs and all that good stuff. We'll cover all of that stuff when we do a full tour here in probably a month or two. Oh, not that long, Chad. <laughs> These people can't wait much longer for a tour of our 410. And honestly, I can't wait to show it to you. So we are almost ready to film that. I just have a couple more tweaks some, to some things in there that I want to do mm -hmm. and then we will be ready to go. So hopefully that will be out soon. But another thing that we added that's new to this one are the under desk drawers. Yeah, those were super simple to add and we're trying to limit what we have to do on travel day and that includes getting some of our storage solutions a little easier to manage yeah. during that transition. Instead of the big um, file cabinet that you would have to wheel and move mm -hmm. out of the way and then secure with bungees, yep. these are just attached to the desk and they stay put and it's great. Super easy, super simple to do, not a big deal. What is a big deal, you guys? You might be wondering, what the heck is that big thing back there? <laughs> yeah, this, this was a 
big deal. Oh man, I am so excited about the storage mm -hmm. in this thing. And we were inspired to do this by Harold and Cindy Strange of One Strange Adventure. You might have seen we did a little tour of their RV. We might have to steal this idea for the new space in the garage. Where they took their toy hauler garage and made it into a master bedroom. Mm -hmm. And they did something like this very similar. Yeah, that gave us the idea of, oh, okay, we needed, we knew we needed something here. We just mm -hmm. weren't sure what we wanted. And then so I started shopping online as I did a lot of mm -hmm. the past several <laughs> months. And nothing was quite right. You know, it was either good size, but then it sat flat on the floor and we need to access that D ring underneath there mm -hmm. for the bike. So it had to, it had to be up off the ground several inches mm -hmm. and it had to fit and it had to be light light enough weight and we finally found it and it is so awesome like we you found it i did but then he, <laughs> he like picked it up and did the heavy lifting and put it together so yeah this thing fits absolutely perfectly yeah and you know what i think is great and again we'll get into more of it when we show you the whole rv tour but the kitchen i thought was a little bit lacking in storage space mm -hmm. compared to our 397 but man i didn't have a place for my air fryer in the last one the air fryer fits right in here let's see look at that boom there's so much space there's still a lot more space that we haven't used in here but i like that it has two large drawers and shelves so it's awesome yeah in our last rv particularly if you saw our camp breakdown and setup we had these two faux leather cardboard storage really cheap really cheap Big lots something and we it. dragged those things around when setting up the garage and it was such a pain to have all that heavy stuff have to move it every time mm -hmm. we set up mm -hmm. this is great i know he said that putting this thing together really wasn't that tricky but i think that the tricky part was the control panel issue yeah yeah for sure and that took a little bit of finagling i'll get to that in a minute uh, but first I want to talk about the overall mounting of it. That was the easy part. And all I did there was I put the unit together without the back on it because I knew I was going to want to attach it to the wall and not attach it via the thin little backing. Mm -hmm. And I sat it back here then I thought about it for a while and I realized I can mount it to both this wall and the back wall. And the way I did that was I took one by threes and ran them straight into the studs on this wall right here all the way down and then painted the front of it so it's all nice and matchy matchy and then i put the cabinet in place and drilled some countersunk holes so the screws are nice and flush inside and just screwed it right into the studs on this wall and then for the back wall i also found studs and used 90 degree brackets and screwed that to the wall in six places so it's really good and structurally sound now the control panel was a little more difficult because there's a control panel on this wall that we wanted to move to this side. Yeah, it was located about right here on the wall behind mm -hmm. this cabinet. Yeah, so just like I saw Harold do in their video, I cut a hole on the side of this to match. I pushed it through and mounted it. And then to cover the wires, it was one of those, let's walk through Lowe's and get inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> so I was walking through the electrical section in Lowe's and found this little like junction box, or maybe it's a cover. holder for a cover for the back of wall switches or something. Either way, I took my handy dandy Dremel tool, cut out one side of it so that I could fit it over the wires. Now we still have a little bit of a hole back there, but it's not a big deal because it's inside the cabinet. I may fix it later, but it'll probably be one of those projects that, yeah, someday. Yeah, it's not, it's not important. <laughs> what is important is that this thing is insecure and we can access the panel because mm -hmm. it's now right here, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Also stolen from the Stranges was the idea of using magnetic child safety locks on these. That way we can lock them on travel days. And then once we get set up, use little magnets, disable them. That way they open right up with no problem and it has been fantastic. It's amazing. It is one of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> and everything has a place now, which is really, really mm -hmm. cool. And you don't have to go digging through those, those no. big old storage chests and stuff, and you don't have to move them out of the way on travel days mm -hmm. and all of that. By far, this has been amazing. That is it for this project montage video. You know there's probably gonna be more because these projects never stop. Never end. And on that note, be sure you subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, if you have any questions about any of this, put them in the comments down below. We do try to get to all those. And that's it, we'll see you next time. Bye guys.